This video is the result of a happy accident from the previous video. Now in the previous video, part three, question number two, you may recall that I said I made a mistake that minus should be a plus, and we solved the plus version of the question. That's a little bit easier. Now in this video, we'll actually go over the minus version. It's a little bit harder, but it's also very useful. So first of all, we can factor x squared minus y squared into x minus y into x plus y. That's a very standard factorization. And if you guys are not comfortable, again, review expanding and factoring. All right, now we already have x plus y, so the trick is gonna be getting this x minus y. We're gonna do that in a very roundabout way. Now, before we do that, again, you could actually find x and y here. It'll be pretty annoying, and that's why I don't wanna do that. But how would you do it the normal way? You would substitute, let's say, for y. So you get y is four minus x from the first equation. Plug this into here. You can multiply this out, rearrange it. You'll get a quadratic equation. When you solve that, you should get two values of x. You plug that in, you'll get two values of y. Now, because you hopefully notice this equation looks symmetric. In other words, there's one x, one y, and an x times y. It's not like it's lopsided. It's not like we have five x's and two y's. So it doesn't matter which value is which. So I suspect if you were to do this, let's say you get two values. You get an x1 solution and an x, a second solution for x. If you pick x1 is some value, you'll get a y solution, and then this will correspond to a second solution. So I suspect that if you swap these numbers, it'll just swap these numbers. So if, just as an example, if x is one and y is three, the second x solution might be x is three, and then y would be one. So it's not like you have four different numbers, these would be related. All right, so that would be the long and tedious and not very inspiring way to, not very inspired way to do this problem. So we're gonna do something very tricky to get this. We're gonna work with, we're gonna try to get x minus y squared. How do we get that? Well, we're gonna square this. Then we're gonna chop off four of these. Why? Because that will now create x minus y squared. If you square this, you will get this. So 16 minus four of these, so what are four of these? That's gonna be six because four, double each side. So 16 minus six would be 10. So that means this must equal 10. Now we're not interested in x minus y squared, we just want x minus y. So x minus y would be plus or minus the square root of 10. Now, as I said before, there's two possibilities, but for example, x could be larger than y or y could be larger than x. It doesn't really matter. So we'll, we'll just pick square root of 10. And so this would be square root of 10 times four. So your answer is four root 10. If you had picked the negative root 10, then your answer would just be negative four root 10. All right, so notice to recap, to create this part of the factorization, we first squared this, subtracted a couple of these to engineer the squared version, and then square root it. So we basically went on this whole detour to come back to this term. Why do we do that? To avoid having to find x and y. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Actually, no, one more thing. Um, as you're doing this, I've been sort of trashing, just guessing, and we've been focusing on algebra, but it's not a bad idea to just try to get a sense of these numbers. For example, could x be negative? If x is negative, y would have to be really positive. Y would have to be nine. However, then you would have a negative times a positive and this wouldn't work out. So just by playing around and trying to guess a few values, we can get the sense that both x and y have to be positive here. So let's just say x is the larger one, then that's how you get from this factorization, you would get that larger solution of four root 10. If x happens to be smaller than y, then y would overpower it, turn, turn this negative, and then you'd have a negative times a positive and turn that into negative four root 10. So again, we don't wanna to spend too much time guessing here. 
but even just looking at it a little bit can be a useful exercise. All right.